complete and utter isolation. Disconnection. Going where nobody will find you. Bursts of life in a desolate land. Glimpses of long ago. Paradise in a very far away place. If these phrases have caught your attention, then you are probably just like me, longing for a breath of fresh air, even if it means sometimes running out of breath, or enduring discomfort, or even putting your life at risk. This series is about just that, escaping to somewhere very far away. <laughs> Nicole and I are on a journey to the west coast of South Africa, a part of the country that is very sparsely populated due to lack of arable land and lack of water. Most of South Africa's eastern and southern coast is buzzing with holiday makers, tourists and locals enjoying the warm Indian Ocean. But the west coast with its freezing cold Atlantic waters and rough terrain is completely off the map for most people. For me though, it's that very isolation that has drawn me there. Over the next few episodes, you're going to see us cover the thousand kilometers from the Sunshine Coast up to the Dry Karoo Highlands, west into Namaqualand, one of the most biologically diverse dry areas on Earth, where millions of flowers cover the ground, and then north again along sandy tracks on the west coast, up through the Namaqua National Park, before finally returning home via a different route. The main focus, of course, is the west coast, but we have to get there first, and a lot can happen over a thousand kilometers. Well, we are finally uh, on the road and out of the city, which is an amazing feeling. It's been a busy week of work, so it's nice to just kind of get away and hit the open road. Got a long drive ahead of us, um, probably about six hours of driving today, maybe more if we stop a few times. Um, just tar red driving, so tires are up to like 2.8 bar. From tomorrow it should get a bit more interesting, but the, the point of today is just to cover ground and, and head north into the, the dry part of the country. Down here on the coast it's still a little bit green, but we're heading into proper, not quite desert, but very close. <laughs> should be fun. Our first point of interest is the town of Grafrenet, established in 1786 and the fifth oldest town in South Africa. We won't be stopping in the town itself, but rather at a very well-known natural landmark just outside the town. So we've just come through the town of Grafrenet, such a beautiful um, and fairly well-run Karoo town in comparison to many other towns in the Eastern Cape. Um, one of the oldest towns in South Africa, We've just come out the other side now and we're going to be making our way up to the Valley of Desolation which is a just mountain slash valley area just above Crawfronet. We don't have much time, we probably only have uh, another three or four hours before the sun sets and three to three and a half hours of that is going to be just driving. So we're going to have to hurry up and down, we won't be able to stay long at the top but we're going to have a quick snack, lunch snack at the top and probably send the drone up. and. Hopefully we get some spectacular views, so let's do it. Inside the Kamdabu National Park, we snack our way up a winding tar road that leads us to the top of the mountain and onto the Valley of Desolation, a place that I've always wanted to visit. We won't have a lot of time here, unfortunately, but let's make it count. I almost tripped there. <laughs> so we're on a little, I think it's a 220 meter uh, trail. Right at the top, that should take us to the viewpoints. Apparently this is one of the most insane little uh, valleys in South Africa. Apparently the views are magnificent according to people that have done this before. So hopefully it's good. It's a real pity that we are so short on time, but I think even if we're here for five minutes, it'll be worth it. This is incredible. These are yeah. so beautiful. Look at that, hey? Wow. 
can't even really put that into words. With time ticking on, we had to hop back in the Hilux and head north once more, waving goodbye to the Valley of Desolation, but looking forward to the next leg of the journey. So we are now traveling northwest. We're about to cross uh, into the Western Cape province. So we're leaving the Eastern Cape, passing into the Western Cape and not too long after that I think we go further north and we cross into the Northern Cape and I must just double check but I think we, we're staying in the Northern Cape tonight so um, it's nice to just travel through three different provinces in one afternoon and um, yeah it's just a beautiful landscape it's crazy you you uh, look at this on a map and it, it looks like just boring dry kind of semi-desert you know how satellite maps can sometimes look satellite images you don't see any vegetation it looks like a desert it looks dry dead but when you're down here on the ground you can see the mountains you can see the the trees in the valleys you can see uh, the grasslands and yes it is pretty dry but there's a beauty to it that satellite images just can never portray so i'm grateful to have nicole here as my uh, Crow driver. Crow driver, but also That's my wonderful good. wife. Uh, being able to share these experiences with someone is great, and to be able to take a break and answer 51 WhatsApp messages, unfortunately, that is the life, and uh, it's one of those things you just I just have to do. But um, yeah, tonight, no more signal, phone off, and we're going to be out out underneath the stars. Further north, we cross the N1 highway, one of the busiest roads in the country, and move into the Northern Cape province, where we gain even more altitude and the landscape becomes even drier. We pass through one or two small towns, maybe somewhat resembling the little mining towns of the American Southwest, or little spots of population in the outback of Australia, and we keep going, further and further into the middle of nowhere before finally arriving at our campsite for the night, a spot called Sotpoort. This place looks a little bit like the moon actually. There wasn't a sign of life to be seen anywhere, aside from a couple dussies that must live off dust and rocks because there's nothing else growing here.
for dinner tonight. We have some lamb chops that we've marinated. We have some uh, lemon and herb sasatis. And Nicole is busy uh, making some garlic bread. We are very hungry. We actually um, skipped lunch, well, sort of skipped lunch. We had a little uh, drinking yogurt just to save time and to try to get it before sunset. So we're very hungry, but I think those are the best dinners. When, you, when you're starving, those are the dinners that you remember the best. So looking forward to this. Well, early start this morning. Uh, it's chilly, it's raining. Did not expect it to rain so much last night. It's probably the whole annual rainfall of this area <laughs> that came down last night. And unfortunately, we're gonna have to pack up in the rain, but thankfully we have the awning out. So let's make a quick cup of coffee and get ourselves ready and packed up and then we'll hit the road. Another five to six hour drive today, maybe even more. So keen to, keen to get it started early. Just north of our campsite at Loxton, we join up with the Karoo Highlands route at Carnarvon, which will take us all the way west until we descend to the west coast. This is a high altitude area that gets very little rainfall and extreme temperatures. Snow in the winter, scorching heat in the summer. It's an inhospitable place for sure, but a lovely place to be driving through with straight roads and very little traffic. Cruise control was invented for places like this. the town of Calvinia we suddenly see a burst of color as flowers start popping up in their millions on the side of the road. We have finally reached Namakwaland. The Namakwa region, meaning land of the Nama people, is home to over 3,000 species of flowers, most of which aren't found anywhere else in the world. Many people journey out here to catch a glimpse of these scenes during the flower season and we were very lucky to be here at the perfect time of the year. I think a lunch on the side of the road is a great idea. We are well and truly in the Namaqualand flower area now. This is insane. It's like we came over a hill and all of a sudden um, there was enough moisture in the ground for, for these flowers to just sprout up everywhere there's white flowers yellow flowers pink orange everything every color you can imagine as far as i can see and on a beautiful moody day like this with you know these dark clouds in the sky and 
mountains in the distance. We could not for a, could not wish for a better place. So Nicole has uh, stopped off here, and we're gonna put the the awning out and get some camp chairs out. Take a lunch break. We're doing pretty well for time. It's only eleven o'clock, and uh, I think we still only have like a couple hours to go. So we should get to camp um, early enough. So some time for some lunch and some coffee and to just soak in these insane views around us. It should be good. So uh, the area that we're in now is probably possibly the best chance we're gonna to get to see the flowers in their full bloom. This only happens once, you know, once a year in a very specific season that only lasts a few weeks. So we're very lucky to actually get a chance to see this. Um, Nivertville, which is the town that we're about to pass, um, is actually called the bulb capital of the world. And obviously, obviously that's not like light bulbs, that's bulbs that you find under the ground that is obviously responsible for all these little plants and flowers popping up. So just a fun fact of the day, we've just gone through, or we will be going through the bulb capital of the world and we are going to be making the most of this and enjoying our time here and just soaking it in. Just west of Nuvertville, the ground just drops away completely as the plateau ends and the road descends down into the Western Cape. On a clear day, I think you'd probably see the west coast from here. Not long to go now and the excitement is building for sure. As I talk now, we are crossing into the Western Cape. I can see a sign up ahead that says welcome to the Western Cape. and. Below us is, uh, yeah, the lower sections of, of the west coast. Um, we've just come from a, from the Karoo Highlands Plateau, which is like 1,300, 1,400 meters above sea levels, and some places even higher. It gets very, very cold up there. And now we are descending down uh, through the mist and uh, into the west coast. So, different section of the country, and uh, yeah, looking forward to seeing what this section of the of the drive has to hold totally different to to what we've just come from it's so beautiful here so let's enjoy the trip we make a quick fuel stop at a town called van reinsdorp before making a beeline for a gravel road that will take us down to the coast we will be lowering tire pressures and traveling north on soft sand for a few hours before we find camp later in the day back in the northern cape the gravel road that leads to the coast is used by the mines in the area and is therefore kept in really good condition. It's also used to access some of the wind farms in the area. The west coast is known for some pretty unpleasant winds and we are lucky to be here in such good conditions. Well, we made it to the west coast. There you can see the coast behind behind me. So we've driven all the way from the east coast to the west coast. And we have amazing weather. I mean, it was raining just an hour ago, pouring with rain, and now the clouds have just completely disappeared. And there's not much wind, which we're very grateful about. But we're on the dirt road, so let's get the tire pressure down just to make the ride a bit smoother. And I think we'll have some nice sandy roads. Um, sand is still very damp, so we need very little risk of us getting stuck but let's bring our tires down anyway, it'll just make the ride a bit smoother. And now you can see why we've lowered our tire pressures. It's definitely not just for comfort over corrugations, it's for traction. Some of the sand is really soft and we're going to find out just how soft in a few minutes. After driving for about half an hour or so up the coast, we decide to hop out and take a walk to the beach. The water is freezing as expected and after taking a few pictures we decide to move on again. But the sand had other plans. 
this was bound to happen sooner or later. Okay, well, we are stuck in the sand, so thankfully we got the max tracks. Uh, we put them under the back wheels and we've deflated the tires down to like just under one bar. So let's hope this works, otherwise we are basically sleeping here tonight. <laughs> Should be interesting. The fact that it's gone this deep tells you that this sand is, we should not have driven on this. It much, must say it looks really hard from the outside and it's, it's damp and normally damp sand is easier but man this is shocking to drive on this stuff. Noise. Let's put them under the front wheels. A winch here would have been completely useless. There's nothing to winch off. Those recovery tracks saved us from being stuck here for a few days. I think we would have had to stay on the beach and we would have had to sit up there and wait for someone to come past, which could have been days. So very, very grateful, very lucky. I mean, my, my rear diff was in the ground. And the problem is I was, I had to, I had to go from low first. I couldn't pull off from low second, but once I got going in low first, I just didn't have enough, um, my wheels and spinning fast enough to then pull me out so thankfully the max tracks a little step at a time sorted us out and i might have to buy two more when i get home because i think four would have given us a proper platform to launch from or we could have just created a nice little track up front but please max tracks if you're watching this please sponsor me i need it <laughs> <laughs> west coast for hundreds of kilometers is is very unique in that a lot of it is is owned by mines um, and then obviously there's some properties here that are are privately owned as well where people are still living on the property so um how it works is i mean there's little campsites here everywhere but you obviously either have to get uh, permission from the mines or from the landowners um, in our case we uh, contacted one of the landowners and we we got a permit so if we stop we can show them the permit but it's still wild camping it's still not a like a designated campsite with the pollutions and people staying right next door to you you can pretty much uh, find your spot and and just I mean you could camp a few days naked if you want and no one would ever see you it's such a, a different experience to a lot of other campsites in South Africa so yeah it's super cool and I'm just enjoying being able to drive along the coast for, for such a long time without seeing another human being very special so I can guarantee you we're going to be enjoying this drive uh, hopefully we get there before it gets dark but if we don't well hey at least we have enjoyed the evening we did indeed arrive at our camp spot before dark I think that our timing was pretty much perfect and the last thing on the agenda was of course to pick a spot to set up camp and then get everything ready Wow, this is much easier to drive on. So we've got options. I think the other side there still be better. Think so? Yeah, you've got like a little cove part of this part. I mean, camping right here would be pretty cool, right? Down there? Hey? No. Not? I don't think so. Right, so this is insane. We've just parked off, nice flat spot. And that is the beach right there behind us. And we are 100% alone. No other people camping anywhere close to us. 
we've seen zero people and we've just driven for four hours on the beach and haven't seen a single person which is mind-blowing you don't get this anywhere else in the country and look at that that is right in front of us just perfect we're gonna be watching the sun set soon sit down with a nice beer after a long day of driving and yeah it's past 5 or 5 p.m. now we started driving at half past 7 this morning so it's been a long day but time to settle down there you go rooftop tent is up so that's obviously where we'll be sleeping awning is out I've put the uh, the pole out and tied it down just in case we get some wind overnight kitchen unit is back here that we'll be making coffee and stuff uh, this will obviously be in the shade tomorrow when the sun comes from the opposite direction because right now the sun is going to set over there kind of northwesterly direction so that'll change tomorrow it'll be behind us and this awning will give us awesome shade as we, we sit out here fireplace is conveniently located uh, right behind us so that's where we'll be making our fire tonight table with everything we might need to access quickly two crates of firewood we hang our towels up here in the on the awning to dry fridge over there uh, drawers below for anything we need to access rooftop tent access this side charging point over here for pretty much everything and is the best part we have a shower <laughs> so gas geezer over there and 25 liters of water for showering uh, and that'll be pumped through the shower head so we'll be able to uh, have a nice hot shower if you decide to go for a chilly swim in the Atlantic Ocean everything is here we are set and we are completely self-sufficient we can basically stay here for as long as we want so super happy steaks prepped for the fire flip and lacquer google it <laughs> we left this morning we were in the northern cape and then we crossed over into the western cape now we've crossed back over to the northern cape we've seen so many different landscapes everything from dry sort of almost a desert in, in the Northern Cape we woke up this morning to uh, the Macqua land with just massive variety of flowers and succulents and all kinds of things rainstorms then clouds disappear and open skies and now we're on the beach in the West Coast with waves thundering behind us and a fire in front of us yeah we're grateful to have perfect weather here I know the West Coast can get pretty windy so couldn't be better and we live in an amazing country I have to say. Yeah. So trip to you. <laughs> 